All right, so your test tomorrow is on the structure of the hydrosphere and your ocean environments. Um, I told you guys that when talking about your structure of the hydrosphere, which really means all the water on our planet, um, inclusive of the ones in the atmosphere, underground, um, and oceans and lakes, if we would look at that as the entirety of every drop of water on our planet, somewhere around 97% of it is found in the ocean, which leaves somewhere around 3 to 4%, depending on the math you're looking at, and which textbook. Um, if you were to take this 3.5% and drag it out and say of all the fresh water, of all this water that we can drink, bathe, and utilize found in our rivers and the lakes and aquifers, most of it is found in our polar ice caps. The other big amount of it is groundwater. Okay? So most of the fresh water we have is found in ice caps, most of our, and then groundwater. So if you look at the water cycle, we know the water is always moving. Matter cannot be created or destroyed. So we're not creating or destroying water, but we are seeing water move through different stages of the water cycle depending on what the weather and the uh, the time of year are seasonal. So in the winter time, it may come down as snow versus in the springtime, it comes down as rain. Um, so you got to know your basic words, evaporation, condensation, that kind of stuff, precipitation um, blip, uh, as well. And so if we're looking at ocean water, ocean water or marine water is salty. Um, depending on where you are, that amount of salt can vary. Okay, so whereas most of our water entirely would be oceans, whereas most of our fresh water is stored as icebergs and glaciers. And then we talked about um, the role that uh, icebergs and glaciers play in not only preventing flooding, but also in keeping the atmospheric temperatures cool on our planet. So I used the example, they are the air conditions of our planet. But it also reduced flooding by keeping all this ice, all this water, is frozen and it's not in the ocean, therefore raising sea levels. So of the groundwater, the which would be your rivers, your lakes, your ponds, okay, the the water you probably want to drink would be found in the aquifers. The problem with aquifers is that they are underground. So to get to an aquifer, you do not have to dig a well. And so even though your aquifers have clean, well, some are clean, drinkable water, it's not easy to get to. Okay, you must dig a well to pump the water up unless it's an artesian well where the water shoots out. So if we're talking about the easiest way to get water, it would, however, be from a river or a stream because that surface water is at the surface. It is easily accessible versus your aquifer water, which you must dig down to. But keep in mind, we all depend on precipitation and this water running off line to refill our lake streams and even our aquifers through the process of infiltration. Okay? So... Aquifers are important because it's water we can drink. Uh, it's fairly clean because of the uh, filtration process of it. So here are the next two big terms. A river basin and a watershed. Keeping in mind the key on understanding the difference is that watersheds drain into a river basin. So watersheds are the land around. So if we go back to this slide here. Here we go. All this area around this stream and around this lake would be a watershed. And they then connect into your river basin. Okay? Um, we looked at different types of wetlands. So a wetland is any area that's wet where it has that soggy type of soil that holds water. We have some common ones like swamps in Louisiana. We have bogs. Um, we also have this uh, salt marsh, which is like another word for estuary area. Um, they're not fresh, they're not um, salty, 
but they are wetlands. So the Cape Fear River is the largest river basin in North Carolina. We talked about that and that it's an interconnected. So if you look at a hydrological map, which means a water map of the water in North Carolina, as you see in these little blue lines, we have many watersheds, many uh, streams and little creeks and little uh, tributaries. And then we have this major river basin that we call the Cape Fear River that connects all throughout uh, North Carolina, eventually ending up in the ocean because all rivers flow into the ocean. Okay, so from there, we then looked at once it gets into the ocean. Now, before it gets into the ocean, it gets in this area we call an estuary. So here we have the Cape Fear River coming down. Here we have the Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf of Mexico, depending on where you are in North Carolina. And we have this very unique area here where the fresh water is flowing down and during high tide, the salt water can move in. And that creates an area we call an estuary, okay, which the water is not fresh or it's not marine, it's also not aquatic. Oh, sorry, it's not aquatic, nor is it marine. It is brackish, which is a mix of both. Then we looked at the functions of an estuary. So we talked about controlling erosion. We talked about this filter um, and trapping nutrients and sediments, which end up being the food for um, a lot of your stuff. So inside the seawater, we do have uh, lots of gases. And the three most important gases are nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. Uh, marine plants like phytoplankton depend on this carbon dioxide to do photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is where they add carbon dioxide plus water plus the energy from the sun, and they make their food, but they also give up oxygen, which is important for all the animals to breathe. Okay, um, important to note is that the colder the water, the more gas it holds. Um, this is a clam shell. They call it giant clams. So that's a really big clam. And so you find these guys in water that's cold because that cold water will hold more gas. Okay. Um, deeper water, which is a higher pressure, also hold more gas. And so the deeper water you find bigger animals, and that's why these guys go fishing in the deep ocean. Um, the ocean is important because it provides them with food, um, travel and shipping. So we get a lot of stuff um, shipped from China and what's not for recreation and relaxation. We also get valuable resources like gold, silver, um, and oil from the ocean, which makes sense because there's more ocean than there is land on our planet. We then look at the different zones in the ocean. Um, once the water flows from the intertidal zone, it flows into the, sorry, if it flows from the estuary, it then enters the intertidal zone, or then it flows from there into the coastal and erratic zone, the ocean zone, and then you have your abyssal zone. Keeping in mind the animals that live here, half of the day, they're under cool water, nice salty water. The next half of the day, they're hot and dry. So a lot of these guys have uh, shells that can close up or they will move with the water to stay wet and live. In the coastal zone, you have a lot of life. You have coral reefs. Um, and this life is existing because this water here is fairly shallow. So the sunlight penetrates all the, all the way through. So there's lots of photosynthesis in your coastal zone. From there you get the ocean zone, which um, you find that a lot of your producers like phytoplankton, they were drifting in these currents. Well, plankton means, um, is the Greek word for drifters. Phyto means able to do photosynthesis. So these are plants, microscopic plants, which are the producers and the base of the food chain. The abyss is the bottom. And then we looked at uh, the types of plankton and how to uh, explore the bottom. So when exploring the bottom, you have some different tools. Um, you can use a submarine, which is driven by a human, which comes with some um, dangers because the pressure, or uh, ROV, or uh, remotely operated vehicle, or a sonar, which is using sound to map out the different areas. We then look at pollution. So Pollution will either be uh, point source or non-point source, depending on it. 
Now, there is a lot of trash in the ocean, like plastics and other stuff, which presents some dangers because they don't biodegrade. Um, animals do eat it for food and stuff, so um, it's not a good thing to have in the ocean. So the problem is that all rivers, so all of our watershed flows into our river basin, and all river basins eventually flow into the ocean. So trash from anywhere is now accessible to our waterways. Keeping in mind, the difference between point source and non-point source is if you can um, identify where it's from. All right, so I hope this helped you. Um, you have your answers for your test questions, so please look over them. Look over your homework, look over everything, um, and if you need to, you need to see me or ask me a direct question before your test tomorrow, and I'll be happy to help.